All right, I want to start off by saying, Brakatha Yahweh, Brakatha Yahweh Shai, Brakatha Yahweh, Brakatha Yahweh Shai, Kahala Yahweh Ba Shim Yahweh Shai, Kahala Yahweh Ba Shim Yahweh Shai, Ba Shim Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone that told me this doctrine in truth and sincerity. Shalom unto the elect. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh, which means He is or He exists. Ba Shim in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We know His name to be Yahweh Shai which means he is the deliverer, he is the savior for the Hebrew Israelites from the pedigree of your father, Bashim in the name of the Rokok Kodash, which means the Holy Spirit that's able to give us the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of who we are, which are the true Hebrew Israelites. If you're so-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native American, or of the speckled bird looking like the other nations, and your spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh Bashim and Rashai, you could be one of the elect. Shalom. We've been discontinued from our heritage because we went off Falling after false gods and false idols, and not following the law, such commandments that was given to us by our forefathers, and because of those offenses, we were sent into captivity. But through Yahavashai Hamashiach being that perfect sacrifice in the flesh to the heavenly Father Yahweh, He's been given all power to be able to sit on the right hand side of the heavenly Father Yahweh to be able to open the seals of this book, to be able to give the understanding to the teachers, the disciples, the apostles, and the men on down that followed the. The lamb wherever he goes in sound doctrine to be able to wake up the tabernacle of david which would be the elect which would be the remnant to be able to um repent for their sins and be converted before the said destruction comes to uh, babylon the great and other parts of the world babylon the great in the scriptures is america today babylon means confusion america means bitter and it's controlled by our oppressor which is esau edom esau means wasted away is and they are the biblical edomites that it speaks about in the scriptures the self-proclaimed white men of today, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Oppenheimers, the DuPonts, the Warburgs, the Schiffs, the ones that are creating a siege, a military blockade <clears throat> on Babylon the Great by cutting off the food supply, uh, weaponizing the food, um, destroying uh, the water by putting mercury and fluoride in it, burying aluminum in the air, coming with uh, false doctrine, bringing out their um, the false messiah, uh, um, a pale face, uh, white hippie image, when that's not how our Lord looks. Our Lord is what an austere man, which would be a so-called black man of today. And the job of a prophet, Yahweh Shai sent forth his prophets that would have the mysteries, would have the understandings to be able to give to the, the, the give to um, the tabernacle of David, to be able to, again, wake them up out of gross darkness. And what you have is you have men that the Lord woke up, but many are called, but few are chosen, okay? far as in the ministry you have many that were called but how many have been chosen what you're seeing is you're seeing um a division between sound doctrine and not sound doctrine and the lord said that this would happen this would be the tabernacle of david okay which would be the righteous in the house of saul which would be the wicked okay and so and also the lord said there would be false prophets in the latter days that would come in my name that would even say the name okay that would even give uh, uh praises to to renowned men but then would, would would buck up against him look at um judas iscariot okay um far as um him turning on yaharashai okay him turning on yaharashai and that was someone that was close with him and that's the same thing that's that's happening today and what you're seeing is um men coming with their own lust boasting in their own pride they learn they learn some scriptures they have a, a following and now they want to come against the, the men of the Lord that have been doing it for over 35 years. Okay. And so this lesson is going to be centered around uh, the Lord's only coming for the meek and the lowly. Okay. He's not coming for the proud and the boastful. Um, you know, the reason why he's not, why Esau can't be saved because he's very boastful. What did he do? He covered the faces of the judges thereof by putting forth his image of his a white pale face uh, Messiah, uh, making up his own name. Okay, crossing out our Lord, crucifying our Lord. Okay, and that's the same thing men are doing because when you come with um, doctrine that's not sound, that means you have gal in your mouth. That means you're not singing the new song. That means you're not part of the elect unless you repent. Okay, but the but the elect is not going to have gal in their mouth. Lord willing, we endure to the end. That's why we constantly have to examine ourselves, and it speaks about in Corinthians, examine ourselves if we be in the faith. Okay, because this is not our rest. This is not a place of uh, uh, we're going to chill out and, and we're going to um, get a bunch of f millions of followers. We're going to be loved here. No, the Lord said he was going to give praise in a in a, um, in a land where we where we were um, basically uh, shitted on. 
Okay, the Lord's going to do that, not not of our own hand, because you have people that are saying they can basically save themselves. And the Lord has sent forth the Heavenly Father, Yahweh has sent Yahweh Shai, which is the physician, to be able to um, be able to pardon our sins, because our righteousness is a filthy rags. Okay, so let's, let's get into it. It says the good news for the oppressed. And what's the good news? This is that that we are our Hebrew Israelites, okay? You so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos, so-called Native Americans, and we are oppressed. We are under the curses, and it's a blessing to be able to understand why you're in the ghettos, the vadios, and the reservations. Why you can't um, be able to uh, save a certain amount of money. Why you're always constantly subject to payments. That's because we're under the curses. Because we move Yahaba Shema Shai to anger. Okay, that's the good news. Okay, the the, the bitter news is that. When the Lord draws you into this truth, you're going to be hated, hated for um, of your beliefs. And that's what you're seeing as far as these celebrities, you know, even though we know that they're cult of personalities, they're set up to be able to push propaganda. But what they're what they're framing is framing mischief by law by having people be hated for their own beliefs. And then they have to be buck breaked and back down. But the men of the Lord, there's 7000 men that are not going to back down. Okay, and the Commonwealth believers, and that's the ones that the Lord is coming back for. He's not coming back for um, false prophets. He's not coming back for for proud people, for boastful people. Okay, he's coming back for the meek and the lowly, which would be the elect, the remnant. So this is Isaiah sixty one and one, the Spirit, which is the what, the Rakah in the Hebrew. Okay, which is what the breath of life that brought us out of the congregation of the dead, to make us to be able to stand. And great boldness, far as boldness in this word, not boldness of our own lust, but boldness in this word. Okay, and that makes what these heathens afraid. Okay, it even makes two thirds of our people afraid because uh, they want to live here. They like being in mirth. They like being in oppressed. But the mindset of um of of the elect is what a uh, victory of of having our oppressors below our feet, below Yaharashai's feet first. First things first, Yaharashai being name being glorified. Then the elect will be joint heirs with that. Okay? And that's the order. The order is being set. Okay? And those that don't like order, they're they're low, they're renegades. Okay. Um, far as we're speaking about the order. You might be teaching by yourself. That's not what I'm speaking about. I'm speaking about far as you you want to go with your own doctrine. You learned a little bit of the doctrine from the apostles, right? At Great Millstone, and then now you have your own doctrine. Now you're good, you know everything. Okay. So those are the ones that are going to be what those lone wolves that are going to be what, um, unless they repent, they're going to get caught up in the said destruction. Because once you start off with, um, you know, division amongst the camps, division uh, amongst the amongst the brethren, okay, it, it just keeps going on and on. Isaiah 61, the spirit, the rakah of the Lord, our power is upon me because Yahweh had anointed me to preach good tidings. Good tidings unto the meek. He had he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to captives and opening of the prison to them that are bound. And we are bound by what? Um, by the curses that have been upon us. And the Lord, what the executioner, um, which is Esau Edom, has us bound. Our oppressor has us bound. But this is and that's why this is not our rest. Uh, what we what we got? Um, Micah 2 and 10, arise ye depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with the sore destruction. Yep, because everything that's set up here is what, in mirth, it's a trap and a snare, it's an illusion, it's an enchantment, okay? Because here we have what, no continuing city, but we want to seek one to come. Yep. Hebrews uh, 13 and 14. For here we have no continuing city, but we, but we seek one to come. Yeah, we seek one to come. And that's through our Lord Yahweh Shai. Because what? This place is the land of darkness. Job 10 and 21. Before, before I go, whence I shall not return, even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. The land of darkness itself and the shadow of death without any order where the light is as darkness. No order. Okay, but what is the Lord doing? He's restoring back order by what? Bringing forth his men. Okay, he could bring forth his men that have what? Sound doctrine. That have the Rukakwadash. Okay, to be able to what? Give you understanding. 
because this is the land of darkness. Darkness goes into obscurity. It goes into confusion. Okay, it's confusion when you're when you're following a doctrine for for seven years, ten years, and then all of a sudden you're like, nah, that's not it. Okay, and then you don't prove anything. You just you just come out with your own wits. That's being what um uh, you're trying to fill, fulfill your belly. Okay. And this is what the land of darkness and the Lord has sent forth his men that would have what that light upon them. Which would be what the truth Isaiah. Isaiah nine and two, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Yeah, we were calling ourselves black, calling ourselves, um, you know, Latino, calling ourselves uh, Native American, Brazilian, Ameri uh, American, calling us a. Uh, uh, we were calling ourselves Proverbs and bywords when that's not who we are. Okay. We, we are actually Hebrew Israelites. And that's if your spirit bear witness with the doctrine. Okay. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light, which is what the truth. They that dwell in the land of shadow of death upon them had the light shine. So this is the valley of shadow of death. Psalms 23 speaks about that. Okay. The valley is what set at a low place. Okay. Shadow of death because barium aluminum in the air, the food that you eat, Okay, and it speaks about that they shall uh, wear out the saints. Okay, uh, concrete jungle, um, you know, women against you, your family against you. Okay, this is constant death, but the Lord is what preserving you to what to the end. Through what is truth, Isaiah 61 Arise and shine, for the light is come, and the glory of Yahweh is risen upon thee. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but Yahweh shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Yeah, so the gross darkness is that veil that's been, that's upon um, all of the world. That, that, that far as on um, Babylon the Great, far as Esau is a good guy, or what, the white guy is a good guy, um, you know, being wicked is good, okay? Um, Isaiah 4, 5 and 20, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So in this world, the more people, the more followers you have, the more prestige you have. But the Lord said he's only coming for what the meek and the lowly. And that's a very small what a sanctuary of men, a very small residue of, of men and what uh, believers that are going to be able to have the understanding to be able to endure to the end. OK, and that comes with that meekness. Was that 61 and 1? <clears throat> so I want to look up this word meek in 61 and 1, as I read earlier. I just want to get the Google definition real quick. Meek, quiet, gentle, easily imposed on, submissive, patient, long-suffering. Okay? And that's how our Lord is. That's how he's coming because he's coming with a humble spirit, humbling you down to be able to come up out of this darkness. Okay? Strong's H, 6,035. Anav. Anav. Yeah, the poor, the humble. Second entry. Sorry. Anav. Anav. Yep, the poor, the humble, the afflicted. So who's who's actually afflicted in this world? You so-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native Americans. Okay, because even two-thirds of our people, they don't feel that they're afflicted. Okay, because they don't have the understand understanding of what's happening. The only ones that have the understanding are the what the um the elect, the ones that are crying aside for all the abominations. Okay, the ones that are not in the meek, the, uh, they're not in the um congregation of the dead. And let's go into real quick. Um, I have uh. Saki, just go to this one. Isaiah 61 and 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh and the day of vengeance of our power to comfort all that mourn. 
So the Lord is what giving us words to be able to comfort us. Okay, let's go to a scripture. This is um, First Thessalonians four and eighteen. First Thessalonians four and eighteen. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Okay, and that's what we're supposed to do. What eat the whole roll and go out there and teach and comfort one another with these words. First Corinthians one. Slack you. Start for Second Corinthians four and one. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 4 and 1. Therefore, seeing we have a ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. Okay, so mercy is what the understanding of this truth. But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handing the word of Yahweh deceitfully. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience is in the sight of Yahweh. So every man's uh, mindset is on Yahweh Shai. What? Keeping that eye singular. Matthew 6 and 22. Keeping that eye singular. On the prize, okay, reaching for that goal, that mark, to be able to what pass that finish line, to be able to get the victory, which the victory is with Yahweh Shai. Second Corinthians four and two in the NLT, we reject all shameful deeds and underhanded methods. We don't try to trick anyone or distort the word of Yahweh. We tell the truth before Yahweh, and all who are honest know this. Okay, all that are honest know this. Going into that wise counsel, okay. So the the, the ones that are coming with their own doctrine. They're not following the doctrine of the, the head apostles at Great Millstone and the men on down. Okay, they're not following the sound doctrine, the land wherever he goes, and they're coming with their own gainful lust. They're trying to gain, um, they're trying to gain a popularity on this side. Okay, they're what tricking the congregation, and they're distorting the word of Yahweh. Okay, Second Corinthians four and three. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to those that are lost. Okay, lost in what? Lost in the sauce of Esau, Edom's. Um, um, you know, darkness of his gloom, okay, of what being boastful of idol worship. Second Corinthians four and four, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Amashiach, who is the image of Yahweh, should shine unto them. So the God, see how it's in lowercase, that's speaking about the Shaitan. Okay, that's speaking about what Esau Edom. Okay, speaking about the white men of today, okay, which is the deceiver. Right, the deceiver that everything that he pushes is nothing but uh, traps and snares, okay. And he has blinded the minds of those that don't have the eyes out, those that that are not able to what see, okay, see it clearly. Those that don't have that white remnant, let's get that. Revelation three and eighteen. I counsel thee to buy me of gold tried in fire, that you may be rich and white remnant, that may be clothed, and that the shame of the nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy anoint. That eyes what eyes have and they may see. So again, that gold tried in the fire. Because when the gold, when gold is made, and uh, when you first get it, it doesn't look the best. But when it's when it's actually finished, it's supposed to be in the eyes of the Creator, and we're supposed to be in the image of Yahweh Shem as far as uh, rehearsing the righteous acts and coming with like doctrine. Okay, coming with the same doctrine, not coming with our own doctrine, covered with that white remnant that goes into the um, the Lord uh, covering us with what the understanding. Of guidance, okay. The eye salve to be able to go, the eye salve to be able to um, see all things, okay. Because again, we're in a we're in a, um, the belly of the beast, okay, where wickedness dwells. But the Lord has what given us a light that that's able to shine in a, in a dark place, okay. But we have to hold on to the truth, and the Lord is what rebuking us by by giving us the understanding. But He's He's judging us right now. So we're not judged with the world. Revelation 3 and 19. As many as I love, I rebuke, chastise by zealous, therefore, and repent. So again, the Lord uses men to be able to also chastise our people, to, to re rebuke and reprove. Okay, open rebuke is better than secret love. And when people don't accept rebuke, they don't accept the Lord. Okay, in Revelation 3 and 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, so the door of your mind, to be able to give you the understanding. Because the Lord uses the angels, Job 33 and 15, to be able to work on your mind, to give you the understanding of the truth, the faith, the sound doctrine. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and I will sup with him and him with me. So going, that word goes in, that word sup, when you go into the definition of the lexicon, it goes into be intimate, it goes into be blissful. Okay. And, and the Lord is what our husband meant, and he has planted a seed of truth, creating us to be what his women 
which a woman means servant. And we are servants of Yahab Hashem Rashai. We are prisoners of Yahab Hashem Rashai. Okay? That's why we're speaking about Isaiah uh, 61 and 1. We are prisoners. We are held captive. But we are what? Um, when, once you get into this truth, when the Lord draws you into the truth, you are prisoners of Yahab Rashai. Because, again, the Lord's going to protect his, um, his elect. John 17 and 1, 11, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. I come to thee, O Holy Father, keep thou in thy own name, who's thy, whom thou hast given me, and they may be one as we are. So one, not, oh, okay, this guy's doing this doctrine, this guy's doing this. No, one, we are of the body, the spiritual temple. Okay, and it's in red letter, right? That's Yahweh Shai. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in the name, and those that gave us me, I have kept, and none of them is lost. But the son of perdition, which is Esau, Edom, that scripture might be fulfilled. And now it says, now I come to thee and these things I, I speak in the world that they might have my joy, joy filled, joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them the word and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not thou should take them out of the world, but but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. And they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify, separate them, right? Them through the truth. The word is the truth. And thou hast sent in me to the world. Even so, I have sent them into the world. For I say, I sanctify myself, and they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither I pray for these alone, but for them also shall believe in through that word. So that's going to be the remnant. Okay, the Lord was put a prayer over us. That's a prayer. For what the elect, because we had to be in the world to be able to prophesy, to be able to fulfill prophecy. Okay? And that's why it's important to what to defend that gospel, to what protect that little ones, because you don't want the, the sheep playing with the wolf. Okay? A sheep in wolf's clothing. Because you think that, oh, he he's a brother, he's doing the he's doing the epistles. You know, oh, this camp, this camp, they say they're Hebrew Israelites, they're good people, you know, but because not everyone is 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 actually coming out. But a lot of people have a mask on. Okay, they don't have the truth. Isaiah 61 and 2. To proclaim their acceptable year of Yahweh in the day of vengeance of our power to comfort all that mourn. So what we're proclaiming, who we stand for. Okay, who you stand for. What foundation are you on? Are you on that rock? Are you on that... Uh, let, me, let me just get that. Because again, it's, this is beautiful because... Um, you have men that are coming in the name. Okay, they're, they're coming in the name, but are they coming with the sound doctrine? No, they're not building upon that rock. They're building upon sin. So I just get this whole uh, thing right here. It says, <clears throat> Matthew 7, yeah, true disciples. Let's see, yeah, right here. So Matthew 7 and 24, building on a solid foundation. Therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine, doeth them. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And who's that rock? That's Yahweh Shai. Okay, that rejected a cornerstone. That the what the builders rejected. And now what he's being glorified. Um what through through the men of the Lord. Okay, through Yahweh Shai giving the word to um the elect. Let me get a scripture. Psalms 118. And 22. Psalms 118 and 22. The stone which the builders refuse is come, is become the head of the head of the corner. This is Yahweh's doing. It is marvelous in his eyes. This is the day which Yahweh had made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Okay. Save now, I beseech you, I beseech you thee, O Yahweh, Yahweh, I beseech thee, send not send now prosperity, success. Okay, well, what is success through this word? Blessed be he that cometh in the name of Yahweh. We have blessed you out of the house of Yahweh. Our power is Yahweh, which has showed us light, okay, which is the truth, which is Yahweh Shai, right? Bind the sacrifice with cords, even the horns of the altar going into horns goes into what the power, okay? Thou art my power, and I will praise thee. Thou art my power, I will exalt thee. Oh, give thanks to Yahweh, for he is good, for he is mercy endure forever, okay? His mercy endure forever. This is not just for, a, a, but for a moment. Okay, this is going to be forever, everlasting kingdom. Okay, because what Esau, Edom's rulership is but for a moment. Okay, and that stone is speaking about Yahweh Shai, that rock, that rejected cornerstone. 
Matthew 7 and 24. Therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine, do it then. I will liken him to a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And a rain descended in the floods, and Cain's wind blews and beat up the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Okay, so when things come, when when, when people come, as far as the, the persecution, the accusation, things like that, uh, that's going to be considered like the, the uh, when Esau, Edom comes in like a flood, that tempest. Okay, and those that are weak are not going to be able to endure because they, they can't endure what the persecution. Because again, the Lord, these are uh, the men of the Lord today, okay, are the men of the Lord back then. They were fierce warriors, but now we're in a spiritual warfare. Okay, Matthew 7 and 26. <clears throat> and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine doeth them not, it shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. So, what it says, what endure like minded doctrine. Okay, have wise counsel. Don't don't um engage in, in many affairs. Why does it say these things? Because again, we're we're in the flesh. And and what those things lead to is what boastfulness, proudness, and they lead to destruction. That leads to what building upon that sin. Okay, that could be taken away at any time. Okay. 27. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Yeah, there's going to be a great fall because again, you um, when you come against the Lord, He could have you take the karagma, and then and then you get caught up in the and in, in, uh, the Lord's going to what choose your delusions. Okay, that's why it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living power, right? And the men of the Lord are what proclaiming uh, the name. Let's go back to Isaiah 13, and we'll start from. Um, 2 Isaiah 13 and 2 Isaiah 13 and 2 lift up that banner upon thy high mountain exalt thy voice into them shake thy hand that may go in the gates of the nobles okay so lift up that banner lift up the scriptures shake thy hand tell people about what they're doing their wickedness okay where they will hear or they will forbear for our people but also telling these other heathen nations that what's going to be their judgment okay uh the mountain that mountain goes into what the government which is the the high high powers in these different countries, okay, the summits where they meet up, the highest point, okay, Isaiah 13 and 3, I have commanded my sanctified ones, I have also called the mighty ones for my anger, even them that rejoice in the highness, the noise of the multitude of mountains like as a great people, tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together, Yahweh of hosts mustered the hosts of the battle, so ultimately going into the destruction that the Lord's going to bring upon this place, because of the wickedness, because they didn't want to hearken to right here to what the um, the ones that are what lifting up that banner. OK, and what Babylon the Great. Those that are what right here, this is uh, 51. <clears throat> Isaiah 51 and one cry aloud, spare not, lift up that voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yeah, so this is the report that's being uh, reported on by what the messengers giving our people warning. Isaiah 53 and 1, who have believed that report, and to whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed, and the arm is Yahweh Shai. He's revealed the port to what his servants, the prophets. And that goes into also uh, being able to see a uh, false doctrine. Matthew 13 11, he answered and said unto them, because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. So it's not given to everyone. Everybody, many are called, but few are chosen. Okay, this is only for the elect, the 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 one that are um, they've been called. We're praying that we're able to be the what the chosen. We know we've been called. As far as in the ministry, we have the understanding, but we're praying that we're standing upon that rock. Okay, that that these secrets that the Lord has given us that we're able to hold on to the end through what proclaiming who we stand for. Okay. Isaiah sixty two. Uh, Saki 61 and 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. And are we mourning? Crying, let me just get a scripture. Who's the ones mourning? The prophets. We have heard that speech and we were afraid. Okay, the lion had roared, who can but prophesy? Roughly paraphrasing Amos 3 and 8, also Habakkuk 3 and 2. Ezekiel 9 and 4, it says, And the Lord said unto me, Go through the midst of the cities, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and they cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst. And that mark right there goes into the Greek word thawah, which goes into the mark of exemption. Okay, the Lord is putting what a spiritual mark on those men, 
or the, and those believers that are going to be able to what that are crying and sighing for all the abominations. Okay, the ones that are not crying and sighing for all the abominations, they're going to have that physical mark that speaks about in Revelation 13 and 16. Okay, but right now you're having a lot of people get what score paid, which is another mark that it speaks about in Romans, um, far as the ones that are causing division amongst amongst the different camps and the true men of the Lord are what pointing out that. Okay, which that speaks about in Romans 16 and 17. That mark right there is speaking about Scorpe, Scorpio, which goes into um, put, a, put a spotlight on those that are not coming with sound doctrine. Those that are not uh, truly standing for the true, um, the whole, the whole, the whole role. Isaiah 61 and 3, to appoint unto them to mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy uh, for mourning. What's the oil? This is the truth. Okay. The beauty for what? Beauty for ashes. Okay. The crown. <clears throat> the crown of what understanding okay it says in the garment the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that might be called the trees of righteousness the planting of yahweh that he might be glorified so what are the trees the trees are the people okay and the who are the people that are going to be glorified the elect and we're praying that we're of that number right so going into another scripture because what while you have men of the Lord on the right hand side that are pushing to do that, you have others that are in that what that proud spirit that the Lord what uh, warned us about. This is Second Timothy, the dangers of the last days. Second Timothy three and one. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, and that's the time we're in difficult times when a lot of resources are are being cut off, and there's going to be a great perplexity on the earth. Second Timothy, uh, three and two. I want to read this in the NLT. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will they will be boastful and proud, scoffing at Yahweh, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. So disobedient, disobedient. You have, um, you know, the parents in the world that people are disobedient to, but also what their spiritual parents. Who are the spiritual parents? The men in the the, um, the men at Great Millstone, disobedient to parents, uh, disobedient to what parents. Okay, you have both. You have ones that are that are obeying the money, that have a 501c contract, and you have men, men that don't necessarily have money, but they're boasting in, in the, what the Lord gave them, as far as the understanding. And then now they're coming up with their own things. Okay, lovers, and let me get this word: uh, boasters. Strong's G two thirteen, Aladzon, Aladzon. Yeah, the empty, the pretender. Okay, and and you have men that are just what pretending in this thing. They're pretending that they're men of the Lord. They're they're wolves in sheep's clothing. Okay, roughly paraphrasing that. Yeah, so again, a pretender, pretend like they're actually uh, men of the Lord when they're actually not. Let's see if we got anything else. Uh, covetous, we're seeing that too. Strong's G, 5366. Philagoros. Philagoros. Yep, you have, uh, so that's in the Greek, 5366, Philagoros, <laughs> right? Loving money. So going up to the Barclays Center, that's that's someone loving money. And telling, hey, you can be a secret uh, a disciple, which there's nothing wrong with that. But they're they're pointing it out for for the black athletes, and they're pushing a black narrative, that black pride bullshit. When the Lord's coming back, you for your so-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native Americans, which would actually be the twelve tribes of Israel. Okay. And again, the meek and the lowly. It's not about how much money you have. Okay. And but you have people that are in that that covetous spirit. Okay, they want to get fame in this land. They want to get fame before uh, Yahweh Shai gets fame. Disobedient to parents. Dis Again, I said this earlier, disobedient to the head of Pasa at Great Millstone. I've been doing this for over 35 years. And now you're saying you the man, you just got a little bit of knowledge. Okay. Second Timothy 3 and in the NLT, it says they will be in loving and for unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. 
That's exactly what they do. All of a sudden, they loved the doctrine yesterday, but now they they got a spirit on them. I don't like that doctrine, but I'm not going to reach out to you. I'm just going to, which is the way that you're supposed to do. You're supposed to actually reach out to that brother if you can. Okay, if you believe he's sincere, you're supposed to actually reach out to him. Okay, but they don't, they don't do that. They just come out with slander. And I don't believe this. I don't believe that. But they never actually talk. They never were saying that before. But then they still give double honors in the beginning. But then they're they're coming against the um, coming against the doctrine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They will hate the good. Second Timothy three and four. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than Yahweh. So again, these men were uh, part of uh, certain groups, certain camps. They were uh, they were under certain people. And what happened? They, they weren't able to withstand in those certain groups. Why? Because, again, of their puffed up pride. Because of their pride, because they didn't want to accept a rebuke or, or um, order. 2 Timothy 3 and 5, they will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. They stay away from people like that. So they will act like they're actually, uh, they will come in a form of godliness. Hey, I'm a man of the Lord. You know, the, the Lord's supping with me. I'm doing, I'm doing what I got to do. You know, the Lord has me doing 20 videos a day, okay? But what are they doing? They're boasting in their in their, their, their proudness, okay? They're not boasting in Yahweh Hashem and Rashai. They're boasting in the work that the Lord has given them. But ultimately, he's given them a lying spirit. It's going into, they give them a form of godliness, but they deny the power, okay? They, and denying the power goes into your denying the men that were sent before him, saying that those are not men of the Lord. That's, that's denying the power, okay? All right, so going into it, it says, um, that might be in the scripture, having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, and such turn away. So again, um, those men have turned away from, from the sound doctrine and gone into their own lust. Which the Lord said this would happen. Okay, so that's why it's comforting. These words are comforting. Second, all right, Titus 1 and 9, it says, holding fast, holding fast the faithful word, Okay, who's the word? Yahweh Shai. As he had been taught, they might be able to, able by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For they are mainly unruly, vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. So the circumcision goes into the ones that know they're of Israel. They know they're Israelites. That's why it speaks about 1 Peter 4 and 17. The Lord is going to judge, uh, judge starting at the uh, Israel, roughly paraphrasing that. Start at Israel, the ones that know they're Israelites, because they become... And again, uh, um, those that those that know the truth, or those that have uh, known the truth and fell out, it's better for you not even to know the truth at all, because you're going to get beat with many stripes. Okay, and that's roughly paraphrasing too. So this is Titus one and eleven, whose mouth must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not to, filthy lucre's sake. So you have that too, te people teaching for money. Okay, te people teaching for what that vain glory, boasters, boasters of themselves, okay, which the Lord, again, uh, gave us uh, comfort through what these words, he would give us the understanding, but the Lord is only coming for what the meek and the lowly, he's only coming for the ones that are uh, repenting for their sins, not the ones that are creating more and more sins. So, okay, this is Mark. 2 and 16 Mark 2 and 16 and when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with the with the publicans and the sinners they said unto his disciples how is it that you eat and drink it with the publicans and the sinners okay so basically it would be the pimps the gangsters uh the people that were looked down in society but the Lord was was supping with them okay because ultimately they 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 were of the elect Mark 2 and 17 and when Yahweh heard it and he said unto them they that are whole have no need of physician. So those that are already good, you know everything, you know, you're good. You don't need to learn nothing. You don't need no elders. You just, you just a one man band show. Okay. You're good. You don't need the physician, which is your Okay. It's in red letter, but they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. So we're supposed to be coming into repentance being again in that meek and lowly spirit, right? This is Matthews five and five. Matthew 5 and 5, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So the meek is the one that's going to be inheriting the earth, okay? Not the proud and boastful. The ones that are what? Putting on the uh, the yoke of uh, our Lord, Yahweh Shai. 
This is Matthew's 11 and 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. You shall rest. You shall find rest until your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So again, because the Lord is what put uh, Israel on his back. Okay, but if you're not willing to jump on his back far as you're not able to be part of the congregation, part of the body, okay, then you're what that's what happened. Now you're trusting in your oppressor, which means that he's gonna put that yoke, that yoke of uh that yoke of that device under your hand or under your skin. And you'll get caught up in the set of perils because you're not putting on as the elect, you're putting on as you as the same nigga that you were before. Colossians 3 and 12, it says, Put on, therefore, as the elect of Yahweh, holy and beloved, bowels and mercies, kindness and humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Okay? Meekness and long-suffering. Humbleness. Okay? Not boastfulness. None of these things seem well. Uh, boastfulness, long-suffering, going into, you follow the doctrine for 10 years, and all of a sudden you're like, the Lord's supper with me. Okay? Yeah, that's not being of the elect. Ephesians 1 and 4. Ephesians 1 and 4. According he has chosen, because the Lord has what chosen men that are going to be able to have this understanding, which would be of the elect. Okay? Which are going to be the meek and lowly that you see today. Ephesians 1 and 4. It says, According as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us into the adoption of the children by Yahweh Hamashiach, to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to praise of his glory, of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted and beloved, and whom we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. So right now we're in the grace period. Okay, but the Lord, again, is testing us, a genuine test of, of who we stand for. Do we do we stand for being a, a boastful and proud, or do we stand for what being meek and lowly? Okay, and the Lord has what redeemed us with that blood that, that Yahweh Shai has sacrificed. Okay, and when we become proud and boastful about ourselves, okay, and it's not, you know, it's not an easy thing. And I'm just bringing this out, you know, um, bringing this out because it was on my spirit. The Lord's only coming for the meek and lowly. He's not coming for the boastful. Okay, the Lord, Yahweh Shai came meek and lowly. He didn't come with his angelic power. He could have stunned on all those people, but he didn't. He came for the to give salvation to what his elect, his remnant. Okay, and that's the same spirit that we have to come in uh, to this day. Okay, just like our Lord Yahweh Shai, because he is the one, um, he is the example. Right? This is another thing, 2 Timothy 1 and 9. It's 2 Timothy 1 and 9. Who has saved us and called us with the holy calling, not according to our works, so not according to what you have done. Okay, but the Lord has called you, right, the chosen, but according to to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Hamashiach, Yahrashai, before the world began, going into Exodus 13 and 2, okay, um, that the first church, the first, everything that's the first goes back to our Lord Yahweh, okay, which would be Yahrashai, the first begotten, and then what the, the, the Alahayim, which would be the first church, okay, would go back to the Lord, right, since the world began, that also goes into Romans uh, 8, where it speaks about nothing can be able to separate us from the, from Yahweh Hashem Okay, which is His chosen, and the chosen are going to have that humble spirit. They're not going to be in that proud, boastful spirit. They're going to be in a, in a boastful spirit, far as in the Scriptures, not far as um, not far as their own their own fruition. Okay, this is Psalms twenty five, and I'm going to go through this whole um, this whole thing. So this is Psalms 25 and 1. It says, Unto thee, O Yahweh, do I lift up my soul. O my power, I trust in thee. Let not my heart be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Okay, that goes into Esau, Edom, but it also goes into two-thirds of our people because a man's foe shall be of his own household, right? Three, yeah, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed with transgress without cause. So we shouldn't be ashamed of the gospel, okay, of any part of the gospel, right? Um, far as if it's in truth and sincerity, okay? Psalms 25, which has been taught to us from the elders and apostles, okay? We need, when, when this, and in in real quick, um, you know, in this, um, the road that Yahweh Shemar Shai has put us down, we need teachers, 
Okay, because if we don't have teachers, then guess what? We start to go off and follow our own thing, our own path. Okay. Let me read this in NLT. No one who trusts in you will ever be disgraced, but disgrace comes to those who try to deceive others. Again, trying to deceive others with their own with their own thing. Now, if you had a certain thought on something, why would you even go out and speak about that if it really is not even according to prophecy? Okay, but it's because people have a proud spirit. They have to put it out there and then they want other people to follow in to, to, to the BS instead of just maintaining order. Uh, uh, what is it? Elder Yashua always said that some things don't have to be said. Some things don't have to be said, but, every, but people have that proud, boisterous spirit, just like Esau. They have to have to say something. They have to put their, their two penny, you know, they have to put, uh, 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 you know, their two pennies inside of the conversation when they don't need to be. Apostle Rakas says the same thing. Also speaks about, you know, uh, as far as an order, you know, a man of, that's been in 25 years might not speak to a man that's just came in. Because they might not have the same understanding. And I could understand that. You know, as far as what, what he was speaking about, you know, um, all right. And I'm saying that more about more about far as a worldly thing, because a man has a man has been many places as far as the understanding where they have been as far as and what they've been doing in the doctrine. But a man that just came in, he still has that, that worldly views. OK. Psalms 25 and 4. Show me the ways O Yahweh. Teach me thy past. Show him the ways of what? The old ways. Okay, the old ways of what following the law such commitments to the best of your ability, not the not the ways of being uh, of selling selling rocks, of uh, being a thug. You know how to um, you know deceive your brother. Not those ways, but the ways of what the righteous. Okay, that straight gate, that straight path. It says, "Lead me in the truth and teach me, for thou all power of my salvation on thee. I I do I wait all day." Yeah, so fret not. We're supposed to fret not. Wait in Yahweh Shema Shai. Six, remember, O Yahweh, thy tender mercies and love and kindness, for they have been ever of old. Yeah, so the Lord has always been with us. Okay, he's always preserved us to this point. Okay, uh, mercies are what the understanding, the mercies of David, what being able to forgive those sins, to be able to pardon sins, right? So the physician, Psalms 25 and 7, remember not the sins of my youth, okay, nor my transgressions according to the mercy. Remember thou... For my goodness sake, O Yahweh. So again, going into the things that we did before, before the Lord brought us into his uh, ministry. Also, um, the Lord, what forgiven our sins. If you come with a contrite heart, the Lord will forgive your sins no matter what it is. Okay. Psalms 25 and 8. Good and upright is Yahweh. Therefore, he will teach sinners in thy way. Okay. And that's what he's doing. He's teaching us um, the upright right. Isaiah 55 and 6. Okay, repent from your sins and be ye converted, you know, forsake your old wicked ways. Okay, and I will be able to pardon your sins, roughly paraphrasing that. Yeah, the Lord teaching sinners. This also kind of uh, goes into Psalms 51, the mercies of David. Okay, teach sinners what the upright way. Once you learn the truth, the whole role, you're supposed to go out and teach. But if you don't know have the whole role, you shouldn't be teaching. Psalms 25 and 9, the meek will he guide in judgment and the meek will he teach his way. So the meek, he's going to guide in judgment. Okay, just like he did with uh, King Solomon. Okay, that was the why he was wise because King Solomon asked for what um, the ways to be able to judge this righteous people. Okay, judge these um, great people. He's speaking about the Hebrew Israelites. The meek will he teach his way, and the meek what he's being taught through what the Rukhakwadash, the Holy Spirit, through men that have the Holy Spirit on them. Okay, which would be the head apostles at Great Millstone and the men on down. Psalms 25 and 10, all the paths of Yahweh are mercy and truth and such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. OK, so keep his what contract covenant is a contract for the name for for thy namesake. Oh, Yahweh, pardon my iniquity for it is great. Yeah. So again, pardon my sin. OK, because my sin is great. Our righteousness are filthy rags. We don't know what we did in our past life and this life. But the Lord, um, Yahweh has sent forth his son, Yahweh to be able to pardon those sins. What man is he that feareth Yahweh and him that shall teach in the way that he shall choose? Okay, so teach in his ways. Okay, not our own ways. Not our own, oh, I'm going to come with my own ways. No, teach with sound doctrine. 13, his soul shall dwell at ease and his seed shall inherit the earth. Okay, going into the, um, Psalms 37 and 12. 
and 11. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plot against the just and mash upon him with his teeth. The Lord, however shy, shall laugh at him for he seeth his day is coming. Yeah, the day is coming for what the wicked. Okay, because the Lord has preserved a certain day for the for um for the wicked. Okay, ultimately Esau Edom, but also two thirds of our people. Going back to yep, Psalms twenty five and fourteen. The secret of Yahweh is with them that fear Him, and He will show Him His covenant. My eyes are ever toward Yahweh, for He will pluck my feet out of the net. Okay, so yeah, the secret is in what the scriptures. Okay, my eyes are ever towards Yahweh, for he will pluck my feet out of the net, that net that Esau Edom has abstracted, right? Turn thee unto me, I have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart, okay, the heart goes into your mind, are enlarged. Oh, bring thou on me out of the distresses, going into Jacob's trouble, the famine, the scourge, the calamities. The Lord's going to, what, uh, raise his elect out of that, okay, out of that Jacob's trouble, and even out of the hour of temptation, that sixth trouble, 18. Look upon my, it says, look upon my affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. Consider, and who has power to forgive sins? Matthews 9 and 6. Okay, only Yahweh Shai. He's been given all power and authority. 19, consider my enemies for they are many. They hate me with their cruel hatred. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me be not ashamed. It says, for I put my trust in thee. Let the integrity of the uprighteousness preserve me. For I wait on thee. Redeem Israel, O Yahweh, out of all thy troubles. So the Lord's going to redeem what his elect, those that are crying and sighing upon the name, those that, that are calling upon the name of Yahweh, Shem Rashai, those that are coming in with that meek and lowly spirit. Not the proud, okay? Psalms 149 and 4. For the Lord Yahweh taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with the salvation. So it crowns with the humble with the victory. They'll have what well, hold on to those crowns of victory. Yeah, let me uh, get a scripture real quick. Because it reminds me of. Or 16 and 15. This is Proverbs 16 and 15. And the light of the king's countenance is life, and his favor is as a cloud of latter rain. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold, than get understanding rather than chosen than silver? The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keep his way preserve his soul. Pride go before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Better is to be humble in spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Okay, and right here, this is real quick. And it says, the Lord, Yahweh, have made all things for himself. Yeah, the wicked for the day of evil. Okay, so the Lord hates, hates pride. This is another one real quick. James 4 and 6. James 4 and 6, but he that giveth more grace, wherefore he said, Yahweh rested the proud, but he giveth grace unto the humble. Okay, submit yourselves, therefore, Yahweh resist the devil, and he will flee from thee. So again, these, these, these false prophets are going to have to flee. Okay, because again, they're being ousted, they're being uh, pointed out. Romans, what is that, 12 and 17? They're being scorpaid. And what blesses the man. Let me get one more, because spirit jumped on me uh psalms 40 and 4 blesses the man that maketh yahweh his trust and respect not the proud such as turn aside to lies okay and lies is coming with false doctrine okay coming out with a with a bug out doctrine okay so going back to psalms 149 i'm going to end it in there psalms 149 and 4 psalms 149 and In four, it says, for the Lord, Yahweh, take it pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with thy salvation. Okay, what's the salvation? That crown upon your head. Okay, let the saints be joyful in the glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Okay, because again, now you actually have rest. The Lord has what uh, um, put down our enemies and given, given us rest. Okay, uh, Psalms 149 and six, let the high praises of Yahweh be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Yeah, going into that rod of iron. Uh, against our enemies, okay? Psalms 149 and 7, to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people, okay? Going into now we're in sovereignty. Now we're what able to be in the kingdom. Our enemies have been put down. The Lord is what changes some of the twinkling of an eye, and now what we're governing 
uh, governing on 12 thrones, the 12 governing the, you know, the tribes, the elect, okay, but also governing these other nations, okay, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters and irons. And that's a, that's ultimately what's going to happen. That Esau, Edom is going to be what? And, and, um, and binds and kings with chains with their nobles with fetters and irons. So that would be the, the elect of slavery, okay? Uh, Esau, Edom, the first... The first crop of slaves are going to be what these elites, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Oppenheimers, the DuPonts, they're going to be bound for a thousand years of hardcore slavery, that double cup, and then they will be um, exterminated after a thousand years because there's no need for wickedness anymore. Okay, nine, to execute upon them judgment written, this is honor, have all his saints, praise ye Yahweh Shem Shai. So that's our honor to be able to um, be a part of, of, that, of that council, okay? And if you're coming in that, that proud spirit, you're not going to be a part of the elect. Now, you will come in the bowels of the elect, okay, um, but you won't be a part of the elect, okay? So going back to the scripture that I opened up with, Isaiah 61 and 1. Isaiah 61 and 1, the spirit of Yahweh Shemashai is upon me because Yahweh had, hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek, and he shall set me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and opening of the prison to them that are bound. So again, the prophets, the watchmen, to be able to give the understanding to wake up the tabernacle of David with this word, to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh in the day of vengeance of our power, to comfort all that mourn, comfort one another with these words, with the sound doctrine. To appoint to them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, and the oil, and the joy for mourning, and the garment for praise, for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahweh, that he might be glorified, that Yahweh Shemashai might be glorified. Because that's who we should be glorifying, uh, if we're glorifying in anybody, is what our Lord Yahweh Shai. Not of ourselves, not of our own uh, lust. Jeremiah 9 and 23, thus said, Yahweh, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glory glory in this, that I, that he that understandeth knoweth me, that I am Yahweh, which ex exercise love and kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, said Yahweh. And that's what we're waiting on, is our Lord Yahweh Shai to be what glorified, to that what, that shining day, and I'll end it right here. Tawari Yahweh Shem Shai. Proverbs 4 and 18, but the path of the just is a light that shineth, the path of the just, who's the just, the elect, is as a shining light that shineth more and more to that perfect day. The way of wicked is, is as darkness, they know not what they stubble. My son, attend to my words and incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thy eyes, keep thy in the midst of thy heart, for they are life, and those that find them are held to all the flesh. Keep thy heart, so keep your mind with all thy diligence, for out of it are the issues of life, okay, which are the rakha, okay, which is the breath of life that Yahweh Shai gives us through what the Holy Spirit. So with that, call out Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakha Kwadash, Shalom to the Lech. Kwam Yashallah.